This idea is more of a fundamental, it's more of a principle. It's one of like my guiding rules in life. And I want to address it on this vlog because a lot of people in the comments below and whenever I do Q and A's, a lot of people ask me about what they should do um, when they're sort of at any kind of fork in the road, at any sort of crossroads in life, and they need to make a decision, what should they do? And this is like big life decisions, not like what should I have for lunch today? In life, you should only ever be doing one of two things, and that is figuring out what you're most passionate about, like finding your dreams in life, and then two, realizing those passions, realizing those dreams. And the first one is much harder than the second one. If you know what you want to do, no big deal. You just commit your entire life to doing it, and you'll either get really close or you'll die trying. But figuring out what it is that excites you, what it is that you're most passionate about in life is really, really tricky. So how, how I approach it, and this is how I've always approached it. This is how I approached it when I was on welfare when I was 17 years old. This is how I approached it when I was washing dishes when I was 20. This is how I've approached my entire life. And that is to absolutely fixate on what it is that I want to be doing all day long every day. Like, what am I doing right now? Is this exactly where I want to be? And by always checking with myself, always checking in, like always hitting that reset button, I can always be really confident in my actions because I know that my ambition is true. It's like that platitude, without a goal you can't score. I really believe in that because if you can't see like the goal posts, how do you know which way to kick the ball? Now, this is by no means a shortcut or a way to make life easier. Every time I've sort of made a big decision on what I wanted to do in life or I, I, I've discovered a passion, it's been then like years of pain and years of struggle to realize or to even get myself on the course to realize that. When I first discovered filmmaking and I was like, this is all I want in life, I was 17 years old. I was on welfare. It took me a, a decade before I figured out how to make a living at it. When I decided that I didn't want to date anymore, I didn't want to be single, that I was unhappy, I wanted a family. It took me years to talk Candace into marrying me, and then actually us getting married, and then having a baby. So, realizing it takes time, and realizing it requires commitment, but it's that first step, that first decision point that enables you to sort of realize the ambition, or at least begin the process to realize that ambition. This is something I do every day even now. Uh, I'm 34 years old, I feel like I've come really far in life, but I want to go much further and I'm constantly reevaluating my decisions and what I'm doing to make sure I'm on the path that I want to be on. You know, do I want to live in New York City forever? I don't know. I love this town, but the idea of raising children here scares the crap out of me. So that's something I'm constantly thinking about. So anyways, that's it. It's a pretty simple idea. It's something that I believe in to the point of it being like religion. I am always fixated on what am I doing and what do I want to be doing. And then that guides me. That is like the, that is the lighthouse that I follow through the darkness. So what do I want to be doing right now? Right now I want to be doing two things. Number one, sharing my ideas and sharing my perspectives and making these little creations that I plop on YouTube every day. And number two is my new company. And I know I haven't gotten into it yet, but the ambition behind that company is to build something that can empower, that can affect everyone on planet Earth, that can affect the whole world. Uh, I realize that sounds lofty and ambitious, but, but your grasp should always be just outside your reach. What's the point in having ambitions if they aren't seemingly unattainable? Seneca said, it's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Thank you, Ryan, for turning me on to that quote. And that pretty much sums it up. Right now, it's go time for me. I want to maximize every waking second. I'm never going to get any younger, but right now, I'm completely healthy. I'm full of energy, and who knows how long this will last. I doubt it's going to be like that when I'm 50 or 60 years old, so I want to do it now. With that, I wanted to share a little bit of my thinking behind that, like a little bit of the logic and then the mechanics behind maximizing or my consideration for really maximizing every day. And I know that this is like, this is, this is crazy person talk, but the truth is 
the only time I really get bummed out or depressed is, is when I'm not being productive, is when I'm not accomplishing or doing or contributing in any way. Nothing makes me less happy than relaxation and sitting around with nothing to do. But why I'm so emphatic about all of this is that I think life is substantiated by whatever impact or whatever contribution you can make while you're alive. The finish line's the same for everyone. We're all ending up in the same place. But while we're here, what, what contribution can you make? Work and building things and making things and doing things and spending time with your family, those are the ways that I feel I'm contributing, that I'm accomplishing something. So why wouldn't I want to maximize my time as efficiently as possible to be as effective as I can with that. And that is why I say free time is the enemy of progress because free time sitting around is not doing. And that's why I try to omit that entirely from my life. Harry wants to know, do you learn more from success or failure? You want to take a stab at this? Um, yeah, I'd say I think I learn more from failure. I guess all of us have this need or want to succeed in some way but when you fail at something especially when it's like a dramatic fail you really makes you stop and take count and think like why did I fail like how can I avoid this I think that it's always the toughest times in your life that define who you are much more so than the easiest times or the best times so failures are typically some of the hardest times of your life so when I look back and I see all the sort of the pivotal moments in my life it was always the struggle, it was always the failure that motivated me, um, not the like loveliness of success. What's the best advice you would give to someone who's worried about their future, what to do after school? My advice is always the same, which is keep yourself extremely busy. As long as you're doing something, you will find your path. Mm -hmm. It's when you get lazy that everything becomes skewed, everything becomes gray or foggy. It's easier to, yeah, on the back of that, it's easier to steer something that's already moving. If you're just static and stationary, it's so hard to build momentum. So. You're a poet, Lou. Yeah, yeah. Why does Owen work in a donut shop? Why don't you get him a cool job? Okay, let me spend a little bit of time picking this one apart. So my son, Owen, has his first job right now, and he works at a Krispy Kreme donut place at the cash register selling people donuts, which is a tough job. And yes, I could make a phone call and I could get him some cushy, easy, fun, cool job at like a production company doing something totally awesome. But I'm his father and I try to do what's best for him at all times. And what's not good for a kid to have as his first job is something cushy and cool. Beyond learning the value of a dollar and beyond learning what the suck means of working in a place like that, he will forever for the rest of his life, no matter how successful or rich or famous he might become, he will forever treat people that work behind the counter with the level of respect that they deserve because he will appreciate and understand how hard that job is. That's one of the reasons. The bigger reason, two days ago or three days ago, I did a whole vlog about sort of life's principles and what it means to always fixate on what do you want from life and then figure out how to execute that. And a lot of people asked, a lot of people replied with, What's the best way to find your passion? What's the best way to find your calling in life? And I have an answer to that. And I don't know that this answer is right, but this is an answer I firmly believe in. The best way to find what you love in life is by doing something you hate. A cushy job, a cool job, a job that you like is, is comfortable. That comfort breeds complacency and that complacency breeds stagnation. So you just kind of stay there because it's a fine job even though it may not be your dream or your passion. And then all kinds of shit happens. She gets pregnant, you buy a car, there's a mortgage payment, you have a house, you have this cushy life, and before you know it, you have these handcuffs, these golden handcuffs that is your day job, that you didn't love, you never loved. It was just an easy job, but now there's no way out of it. And all of that happens by doing something that's cushy and easy. If you get a job that absolutely sucks, something you hate doing, you will spend every minute on the clock fixating and fantasizing about what you wish you were doing. Where did I find my passion for filmmaking and my drive to do what I do in life? I found it in the bottom of the nastiest, burnt up clam chowder pot ever, working in a shitty seafood restaurant where I'd have to dig so deep into that pot to scrub the bottom that it would get all over my arms and all over my shirt. 
and I just reeked of stale seafood and it never came off my body. But doing that for years, 50 hours a week, every week for like five years, really galvanized for me what I wished I could be doing. I fantasized about having a job that I loved, about doing something I was super passionate about, about working for myself and not having some asshole boss telling me what to do all the time. I, I obsessed over it. But if I had been in some cushy, some sweet, some fun job that my dad got for me, none of that drive would have been there. So yeah, Owen works in a donut store. And what he will get from working in a donut shop, what he will get from a shitty job is invaluable. And he might not appreciate that, and whoever wrote me that comment might not appreciate that, but believe me, at some point in his life, he will look back and he will see that that was one of the most influential jobs he could have ever had, I hope. Otherwise, he'll hate me forever for making him work in a donut store. Do you think it's better to plan out your future all the way through or just play it by ear and see what happens? I apologize if I've said this in the vlog before, I can't remember. And this also isn't my original idea. Someone else told this to me, but it's great. It was a great piece of advice that I'm happy to share. I believe in something called the Tarzan method. And what that means is, you are Tarzan, me Tarzan. Starting on this side of the jungle, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, they're the other side of the jungle. And there's no straight line through the jungle. You know what, let me do an animation for you here. The Tarzan method. What that means is you're Tarzan, you're here. And you want to get to the other side of the jungle here. Ideally there's this straight line. But what you find in life, what I've found in life, this is non-existent. This straight line here is a unicorn. It doesn't exist. Instead, you reach and you grab onto whatever vine you can grab onto and you swing. And that vine might carry you in this direction, which doesn't feel like the right direction to your goal but it does get you a little bit closer. And then you grab onto another vine, it swings you all the way over here, a little bit closer. And then you swing in this direction, and then this direction, and 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 eventually you make it to where you wanna be. But the beauty of the Tarzan method, the kind of the magic of being open-minded in your pursuit, is that like these unknowns, like where it might take you that you didn't imagine, that's usually where you find something that is actually what your goals are. I don't believe that there is a straight line between where you are and where you want to be in life ever. Not with family, not with romantic interests, and especially not with your career. So an open-mindedness, even if it looks like this, will yield results and outcomes that otherwise would have been unforeseeable.